Okay, we'll go ahead and get started. Before I start, I just want to give you a, an update. Uh, Vaughn uh, underwent surgery yesterday. It was uh, exploratory type of surgery, and it turned out that he uh, he got a uh, ACL uh, repair in there. So he'll be out for the year uh, as an update for you guys. Very unfortunate situation uh, for Vaughn, obviously, and our team. Uh, we care for him, obviously, like, in, like we would any player. Uh, we know how much this means uh, to him in terms of playing and and being with the team. So we look forward to getting him back, uh, obviously off the field for the rest of the season and, and his leadership. And we're certainly thinking about him as he recovers here. So uh, with that, I'll turn over to you. Well, you know, listen, uh, you care about every player, right? And, and, uh, and, and it affects you when guys go down. Uh, it's the business we're in. It's a, it's a physical game. And, and so, um, we care for everyone. Certainly, we care for Vaughn in this case, and and we'll miss him. Um, but as I said last week, when he was out, it's a time for it's a time and an opportunity for other guys to to uh, to step up. Uh, interacted with him after the surgery yesterday via text. It wasn't uh, uh, it wasn't in person uh, on the phone verbally, but uh, talked to him before the surgery uh, verbally, but not not since. Yeah, it was scheduled. I'm not going to go into the details, John, with all due respect. Um, so I'll just leave it like I said it. Thanks. Was, was there, I, I, I understand what you're saying, so I just want to follow up to that. Because I assume he had an MRI after the initial injury or whatever. There was a question as to whether it was a meniscus or whatever. Was, was, was that the, the, the structure of the ACL? Was that in question the whole time? Yeah, again, I just, I'll, you know, just. Keep it pretty general. Again, out of respect for Vaughn and his situation, it's just he went down there to Texas, uh, had an exploratory surgery. We weren't sure where it was going to go, and it went to that he needed his ACL uh, fixed. So, yes. Yeah, I'm, I'm not going any further. So. Yeah, I'm not, again, not going to, so, so I hope you guys respect where I'm coming from. Let's talk about, uh, you know, the team, the guys moving forward, the Jets. I'll be happy to answer any of those questions. Can you give us uh, injury updates on the guys that are injured? Yeah, so who do you have in mind? Well, Dion, for sure. yeah, he'll be out there a little bit today. He'll be limited today. Uh, who else? Similar, yeah, Quez will be out there, limited. Um, I think Reggie's, Reggie will not practice today. I think that's what Jordan Phillips will not practice. And then Milano is day to day. Shoulder. Shoulder. And not practice. Not practice. Yep. Was it Milano is day to day? Today? Day to day. Yep. What does he have? Uh, he's got a, 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 a leg, knee type deal there. So. What is the new also not practice? Correct. I'm sorry. Yep. Yeah, I mean, uh, we've got guys that were that were brought here for a reason, and and like I said, I thought they did a good job in the game the other night, um, and uh, you know the work continues for all of us, uh, and those guys as well. It's a great opportunity for them. John, can you speak to um, you know, from an offensive standpoint, going against a defense like the Jets that has such great lockdown corners? Can you maybe speak to a little bit of the challenges that that brings? <clears throat> The Jets, yeah, I mean they're they're a very talented defense. Um, you know everything goes through their front. Um, they've got a lot of you know uh, talented players up front, and they roll them uh, rather uh, quickly with their rotation. And and uh, you know their back seven is you know when you look at their linebackers, they're experienced players, and uh, Mobley does a good job inside in terms of running the defense and the operation. And then um, you know the corners. The corners are talented. Um, and they've done a good job of building that. Is it rare to see a guy like Gardner? I know he's not so long as Jets, but to see a guy play that well so quickly? Um, I mean, it's it's rare when 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 you're a rookie and you play well uh, at any position rather quickly in the league. Um, you know, he's he's as advertised, right? I mean, he's high pick in the in the draft a year ago, and 
Uh, he's off to a great start. One game at a time. Yeah, it's just important that we that we do that. I mean, that's that's uh, we got to stay in our process and, and focus on this game. I mean, let's, let's this is a team that beat us, and uh, it was pretty convincing in how they beat us. And uh, so, um, it's a division game, and uh, we got to be ready to go. Yeah, our guys are resilient. Um, you know, I'll give them that. Um, they've they've shown that for the better part of this season. You know, we faced adversity, and and this is no different, and just a different type of adversity. So, um, you know, it's we buckle down. Everyone does their job. Everyone does their their one eleventh, and you do it better. And you and like I said earlier, you know, it's time to step up. Um, we're just taking it one day at a time. So we'll see. Well, a little bit of what I said. I mean, they play hard. Um, I think Coach Sal has done a really good job. Uh, Coach LaFleur as well. Um, uh, they're well coached on special teams. Um, you know, I just think across the board, they're well coached. They, they've got a talented football team. They play hard. I think all those things really stand out when you watch the film. Glenn, what, when, you know, with Mike White in there, um, and it seems like the ball is coming out quicker or whatever, are, are they tougher to defend um, with him in? What, what's the difference? <coughs> Well, I think he's a good player. Um, he can make throws. Um, you know, he's had success in this league in the short amount of small amount of starts that he's had. I think in the last two games they've were close to or exceeding 900 yards of offense. I mean, that's impressive in and of itself. They got a lot, lot of weapons on the offense. They're deep in the wide receiving group, and they just roll them all. I mean, they they uh, they roll them. So um, their tight ends are active in the run and pass game, and and so are their backs. So. Uh, they got a, and they've got a very good screen game, so um, they're a, they're rolling on offense as well. <coughs> I just think it was a good uh, good roll by uh, uh, in terms of the substitution pattern by by Coach Skipper and and Coach Dorsey, and um, just kind of feeling the game there more than anything. And it's not any less confidence in motor, but just you know, um, putting get good good football players on the field. That was obviously a tough goal. It looked like he was. It looked like he started to become more decisive, a little more confident when you know you see him at you know in practice. Just kind of give me an update on Coach Skipper. Yeah, I, I think he's, he's again he continues to grow. Um, he continues to to improve every week uh, via his practice and then and then in the game as well. And sometimes it's just opportunities, and sometimes. You get more, and sometimes you don't get quite as many, and and so, and then when you're when you're feeling, you know that that when you're in the flow, um, especially as a running back, in this case, sometimes that happens where you just you, you get going and you, and you get more touches. Sean, on Monday, Kendrick said <coughs> 99 for the challenge of getting up to speed quickly after coming to a new new team via trade. You've had to incorporate new pieces into the lineup rather quickly this season. Uh, AJ Klein, John Brown among mm -hmm. them, and obviously those guys have some familiarity based on their time here, but. What is the challenge when you have to so quickly get guys ready to step in and play meaningful snaps? Uh, yeah, there's a it's a balance. I mean, you want to get them up to speed. Guys uh, that have been here or haven't been here, you want to get them up to speed as quickly as possible. But you also have to safeguard against a little bit of hey, you know, they they look good, but maybe they're not totally in physical shape yet. Uh, that's one piece for guys that haven't been playing, maybe, and then. The other piece is the mental piece of can they execute the, the defense or, or the offense in this case or special teams, um, because things come up on the field, you know, kind of rules of engagement that if they haven't been in the system for enough time, they hesitate, and, and when you hesitate, uh, it's not a good thing. And then in regards to Nike, I guess it's specific. Now that he's been here a month and has finally gotten some time to practice, how far along is he in that process? I feel like he's in a pretty good spot. I really do. Um, you know, the coaches have done a good job along with Naheem of getting him. Of working at it and getting himself going, and um, I feel like he's in a pretty good spot. And um, you know, we'll see where it goes moving forward. John, where are things right now from your perspective with the second quarterback? <coughs> the 
Yeah, I mean, we're looking at all those guys, and I think uh, all three of those guys bring value to our team. Um, and we'll just see how it goes this week. You've had um, a number of years now, first round <coughs> picks, different levels of like starting, like Josh obviously started all his games, Jermaine, and then Ed had that kind of segment where he was kind of developing. What do you, what's your message higher during this as you kind of battle for you know, game day reps? Yeah, control what you can control. And uh, when, you're given it, when you're given an opportunity, you, you make the most of it. Um, you execute the way you're supposed to execute with proper technique and and physicality, and, and just like anybody else, it's do your job, and when your number's called, um, be ready to perform. Doug, is it tough to keep a, a guy like that mentally strong? <coughs> he doesn't have a, a past resume of college success to draw upon, or a, a comfort in the league being a guy who's in the first year of his career? Uh, I mean, it is. It's There's always a mental component to everything for, for every every player we have. Um, but there's also, in particular, when they're when they're young, when they're rookies, and they haven't, they're not used to this, maybe to your question, um, but they can look around our team and, and really around the NFL and see that this is, you know, things like that aren't, aren't unique. And, and, and so there's going to be ups and downs, and you're going to have to wait sometimes, but you've got to work while you wait. And, uh, and, and I think Kyer's done that. And, and so, um, you know, just, it's all about improving each and every day, never too high, never too low. Um, stick to your process, and, and if you need to find ways to improve your process, improve it. And then technique-wise is making sure you're working on the areas you need to work on. So are you guys hopeful for Christian Dunford's return to this week? Uh, yeah, we'll see. Sean, you guys have started 11 unique starting lineups on your defensive side of the ball. I mean, it's top of the league, 9-3, mm -hmm. though. What's that say about the expansion you guys continue to do with, with the backups throughout the season? Yeah, I think, you know, the, the, the defense led by Leslie and the staff have done a great job. Um, like I said the other day, they, they haven't blinked when there's been the, the rolling of the lineup since really, I think, after game one for the most part. Um, and the players haven't either, to their credit. And so it's, it's always next man up mentality. And you go in there, and they've done a, a really good job to this point. And, and so now it's about um, you know getting, getting into a good flow here as we go. Sean, what went into letting Dunford do that? Uh, just roster at this point. So. All right, thanks, guys.